You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. It's a victory win. Victory, victory win. It's a victory win. They were first in their conference, just as like we were first in our conference. That's five seniors. We've been together since like fourth grade. Coach Parker always emphasizes one game at a time. So, you know, in order to get to our goals, we have to play one game at a time. So we can't look ahead. It's a new sexual for us. I don't know. I feel like just the sexual game, everyone's going to come. And it's just going to be a good atmosphere. Uh, with all due respect to Cool and the Gang's epic hit in 1979, it's ladies' night here on the Highlight Zone. Girls sectional semifinals, you win tonight, you play for a championship tomorrow, and no better way to tip things off than with a pair of conference champions going head-to-head. -head. Golden Howard joins you now with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton? You're right, Glenn. It was ladies' night, and with these two focusing on a sectional crown, both Homestead and Columbia City have already put a pair of trophies in the trophy case for this year. In the regular season, the Spartans winning their fifth straight SAC title. Meanwhile, the Eagles clinching their first ever NEA championship. Columbia City and Homestead, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Spartans ranked fourth in this week's 4A state poll. Homestead 23-1, Columbia City 15-7. First quarter, a pass to Riley Parker from the top of the arc. The senior sniper giving the Spartans a double-digit lead in the first. Parker, team high, 22 points. Still in the first, Parker to Allison Steffens in the corner for a long two. She's got it. Homestead takes the 13-point lead. Two second, two the second quarter, Grace Schroeder, the fake drive into the lane. She's got the two, cuts the deficit down to 13. A pass inside to Sydney Graber. Great defense, but Graber's able to get it up and good. She finishes with a solid nine points. Homestead by 18 in the second. To the third quarter, Spartans on offense. Ayanna Patterson inside the lines, knocks down the jumper. That shot is mama approved. Could Columbia City mount a comeback? Braden Leakey drives inside, up and good. No let up in the senior. Still in the third, a pick and roll set by Leakey Oliver Shear. For three, another big shot from the big time senior. But Homestead too far ahead. Stephens with a floater that's good, and Homestead wins 53-31. We take every game one, one game at a time, and I think my team did a really good job of focusing on Columbia City and getting the job done, so we're ready for whoever wins this game for tomorrow. There's always pressure, but we take it as excitement. We take it as we're going to get another one because that's our goal, and we're not going to we're going to try our best and not shy away from it. We really emphasize every game that we play is the most important one, so we put a lot of attention into this game. Uh, obviously very excited we won it. And now we're going to come out here tomorrow and be ready to win a championship and play real hard. So who will Homestead get in the sectional title game? Southside or Wayne? First quarter, a no-look pass from Olivia Smith to J.C. Jones in the corner for three. She's got it. Archer striking first, 3-0. Jones has the vision to bounce pass to Ilya Chapman. She finishes with a layup in from under the basket. 7-0, Southside lead. Jones again, this time to Olivia Smith, Southside raining down the threes. Archers go on a 16-0 run to start the game, and Southside wins 89-26. So it's Southside versus Homestead for a sectional title tomorrow night at 7.30. Glenn, it's going to be a good one tomorrow. Back to you. Yeah, a lot of people looking forward to that matchup. Four A sectionals up in Kelderville. DeKalb facing Northrop. First quarter action, we see DeKalb. Kicking it around, they find Morgan Leslie. She finds the bottom of the net, but Northrop up by five in the early going. A lot of weapons at the disposal of the Bruins. Deja Scott is one of those talented offensive players. She gets to the rim right there. Northrop up by the score of 13 to three. The Cowboys Paige Pettis with the assist. Mackenzie Cox doing work, but Fiona White and company simply too much firepower for the Bruins. You're going to see her. Nobody picks her up. She drains the three. DeKalb falls to north of 43-26. Bruins over the Barons. Late game with the Big Blue Pit. East Noble and Carroll. Chargers coming off a bye. East Noble coming off a win over Snyder on Tuesday night. First quarter action, Emily Parrott. Chirp, chirp. She gets the layup. She had 11. Carroll with a four-point lead in the first. Check out the inbound for East Noble. They go to Carly Turner. It's a good decision. She had 12. That would lead East Noble. But Carroll still up by four. Later in the first, Olivia Hepner driving and scoring. Hepner had 12, Carroll up six. You're going to see Carly Kirkpatrick kicking it to Avon Weiswanger. 
Beiswenger had 11, but it's not enough. As Carroll wins 70-37, you got Carroll versus Northrop tomorrow for a title. 4A sectionals at Warsaw, the host Tigers taking on Elkhart Central. We pick it up in the fourth quarter as the Tigers with some nice passing here. Casey Lynn Krebs in the corner for three and the Tigers in the lead, but not comfortably. Check out this look here. Waisha Williams with the layup for Elkhart, uh, Elkhart Central, I should say. And then it's Audrey Grimm coming the other way with the and one as Warsaw. Beats Elkhart Central 46-35. Warsaw going to get 10 tomorrow for a sectional crown. How about some 3A action? At Concordia, Garrett taking on Woodland. The Warriors won Tuesday night on a last-second bucket by a freshman. This one would be another nail-biter. Two minutes to go. Garrett up two, make it four. Faith Owen with the bucket. It's 43-39. Garrett, Woodland. Oh, they got a lot of fight. This is that freshman I was talking about. Ava Smith with the and one. Cuts it to one. And then with a minute to go in the fourth, Dakota Crone with the bucket. This ball game was tied at 44 with 8.4 seconds left. Garrett's got the ball underneath their own basket. What do they draw up? Well, they lob it in to Morgan Ostrowski, and she gets the bucket. Garrett takes the lead. Woodland's got two and a half seconds to make something happen. This one, he is no good as Garrett wins a barn burner 46-44 over Woodland. Um, you know, I was nervous as anybody else could be. Um, I knew I was going to get that final shot off. I was just hoping it would go in. It was a great team effort. I couldn't have done it without any of my teammates. You know, we're young, but we have talent, and we're scrappy, and we just get after it. Nightcap at the cage, Angola and Concordia. The Hornets ranked ninth in the state in three, and they came in on a 20-game winning streak in the Hornets. First quarter, though, it's London Betts getting the uh, shooter's roll right there. Nailed the three. She had seven on the game. Angola, they can shoot it as well. Megan Nyson with the three, but the cadets up one after one. Second quarter action. Hornets on the kick out. Kayla Fenstermaker for the three. But CeCe Callaway and the cadets would have the last laugh in this one. Callaway for three. As Concordia knocks off ninth ranked Angola 42 to 32. You got Concordia and Garrett tomorrow night for a sectional championship. 3A at Mississippi, while the host Indians facing an Orwell team ranked fourth in the latest 3A team poll. Maya Shelton for three. That gives Norwell a little bit of breathing room. 49 44. Knights nice in the lead. Fourth quarter, Norwell Haley Henshin with the bucket. It's now a seven point lead for the Norwell Knights. Mississippi going down low. They got some big gals in the post. Riley McKee for the deuce. But Henshin with a key bucket here as Norwell. Pulls out a close one, 59-55 over Mississippi. Our defense definitely won this game. We we weren't struggling too much on offense. It was just overcoming that big um, presence in the in the paint. We play together really well. That's really important, especially on the defensive end when we have to communicate. We're definitely more um, ready to get whoever we play tomorrow. in Oak Hill. Both teams coming off six, coming in with 16 wins already this season were Belmont and Oak Hill. That was Abby Shaw for Oak Hill with the three. It was a four-point lead for Oak Hill in the first. Megan Busick, though, not about to be done. She nails the three. She had 16 points. That would lead the squaws. Taylor Westgate, a force inside for Oak Hill, but it's Busick again for the squaws, and Andy Hines' team gets a win, 44-37. So we got Belmont versus Norwell. Familiar foes tomorrow for a sectional crown. Up at Lakeland, Central Noble now up in 3A. That is what happens when you win three straight regional titles in 2A and the 2A state title a couple years ago. Cougars and Lakers, that was Beth Stroke for the three. It was 33-16, Lakeland in the third. Central Noble countering Lydia Andrews to Bridget Gray. She knives in, it's 36-22 at that point. Sadie Edsel. Kicking it around to Faith Real for the three. It's a 17-point lead for the Lakers. You're going to see Central Noble here. Megan Keeble to Bridget Gray for a two. But Lakeland, plenty tough tonight on their home court. They win it 56-38. It means a lot. We're going to work as hard as we did today and just keep it in going to, into tomorrow. They're starting to relax. They're starting to get comfortable with what we expect out of them. And... You know, we'll just take it one day at a time and we'll see what happens tomorrow night. 
Late game at Lakeland, West Noble and Northwood. Tip of the cap to this guy, Coach Dale Morano. He's retiring from West Noble when the season's end. Uh, he hope it's not going to be tonight, right? Well, at least the Chargers fans were. It's really Matt trying to make sure that didn't happen. She gets the two, and the Chargers on the board first. Later in the first quarter, though, it's Northwood playing the three game. Kendall Miller, the junior, knocks it down. And then a little bit later, it's Miller again, this time other side of the arc. She drills it. Northwood up by three in the early going. You'll see Mask with the pilfer and the pair, but it's not enough as Northwood beats West Noble 40 to 36. Congratulations to Coach Morano on a fantastic run, 14 years at West Noble. Well, 3A and 4A are now in the books, but coming up after the break, we're going to be talking 2A and 1A sectionals. At Bluffton, the Tigers hosting. Uh, they would face South Adams, and Canterbury would battle Adams Central. We'll have those games at Blackhawk. The Braves are having their best season ever. The question is, would it continue tonight? Plus, we're going to hit up games at Fairfield and North Miami. We've got eight more games coming your way next in the zone. We're in the Cal fans, and we'll be right back with more Highlight Zone. I don't know what to do with my hands, but here's more Highlight Zone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with five state titles in the trophy case, I don't know what to do with my hands either. Uh, Canterbury has a proud history of girls basketball, but the Cavs have fallen on hard times of late. Meanwhile, the last time the Adams Central girls basketball program won a sectional title was almost 20 years ago. Jets won it back in 2001. Doug Curtis and company went away from playing for a trophy tomorrow. We picked this one up in the second quarter. Canterbury's Annalise King with the layup, but Canterbury in trouble. They were down 40 to four at that point. How about McKenna Deesh with the steal and the layup for AC? It is a 38 point lead. And then in the third quarter, it would continue as Adam Central just puts it on. Deesh with the steal and the layup. And then you're gonna see Carly Black for the Jets, top of three. Adam Central with a dominant performance tonight. They win it 70 to eight. Rebounding was key and that's what we got done and next time we're gonna have to do the same thing, but we got what we had to do and we did it. We just knew that we had to block out and rebound. That was the biggest thing. Um, playing together, working together, and just doing the things that we typically do. Well, you know, I'm hoping we've learned from last year. We were in the sectional championship last year, and then this year we were in the ACAC championship, and we didn't come out victorious in either one of those, so I'm hoping we've learned. Who will Adam Central get in the title game tomorrow night? Bluffton or South Adams? Both teams advancing with wins on Wednesday night. Zoe Barger giving Bluffton a presence in the post. She gets the Tigers on the board first in the first quarter. But you're going to see Olivia King doing some damage for Bluffton as well. A lot of offensive talent for Coach Grau and the Tigers as Bluffton starts the game on an 8-1 run. Second quarter, you'll see Lydia Loesch coming up with the layup here for the Starfires off the good feed. But Bluffton goes on to win in overtime, 43-38 over the Starfires. You got Bluffton and Adam Central, two familiar themes tomorrow for a championship. Two-way action at Fairfield High School, LaVille and Westview. Both teams had first round buys. Gloria Miller for Westview, scoring the first field goal of the game for Westview right there. You're gonna see her in a little minute, but not until after this. Kenna Tribby with a basket there for LaVille. Uh, I mentioned we'd have a returner from Ms. Miller. She drills it. Westview, a winner over LaVille, 39-32. to 32. Late game at Fairfield. Good matchup. The host Falcons 15-9. Bremen coming in 16-7. Bremen opening up the lead here. Elia Foster with the bucket as Bremen up by five. Later, Aaron Kofel with the bucket. Bremen up by seven. The ladies in green feeling good. Fairfield actually kept this one pretty tight. Bailey Willard for a bucket for the Falcons, but Bremen victorious 42-38 over Fairfield. Bremen and Westview battle tomorrow. 1A sectionals out of Blackhawk Christian. We got Elkhart Christian Academy taking on Lincoln Park. Both teams came in already with double-digit win seasons. First quarter, the Panthers blowing Jawa with a little give and go. The Panthers get the game first bucket, but they struggled early on. It's Maria Youngen for three as the Eagles take a one-point lead. 
Then you'll see ECA's Abby McKinnon down low for a pair. And Lakewood Park season comes to an end. They fall to ECA tonight, 48 to 27. Nightcap at Blackhawk. The Braves in Fremont. Blackhawk already a school record 16 wins. Could they keep it up? Well, Haley Klein says, yeah, why not? She led the Braves with 15 points. That was in the first quarter. This is in the second quarter. The Eagles, Sydney Applegate, working the paint for two. The Blackhawk has a lot of firepower offensively. A couple of Vanderdusens. This is Hallie Vanderdusen nailing it from deep. You'll see the Eagles' Maddie Bayman. Beeman, excuse me, get a deuce down low for Fremont, but it's Blackhawk pulling it out on its home court, 46 to 37. Blackhawk and ECA play tomorrow for a championship. One A sectional hosted by North Miami in the first game of the night. You got the Lakeland Christian Cougars facing off against Southwood. It's Lakeland Christian doing work here. That's Jesse Calizo with the bucket, and then a little more from Lakeland Christian right in the Winona Lake area. Jordan Gross from about 15 feet will turn and pop, but Lakeland Christian down 37 to 15. Sydney Heflin doing work for the night. She heaves it in. That was a long two, and then you're going to see Heflin do it again as Southwood wins this one by a final of 63 to 34. Nightcap in Denver, 12th ranked North Miami and 16th ranked Northfield. Northfield won a sectional title last season, their first since 1980. Could they make it two in a row? Well, that was North Miami's Bailey time as the Warriors led by three in the early going. Kirsten Stout, though, with a bucket down low. Good hands right there for Northfield. You're going to see time do it again for the ladies in red. This one really back and forth in the early going. You'll see Emma Hoover, though, for Northfield. Pop in the three as Northfield wins 63 51. We got Northfield Southwood tomorrow for a championship. We got more Highlight Zone coming up after the break, including your play of the week. We're the West Solo Chargers, and you're watching the Highlight Zone. We're Miss Stay tuned for tonight's Gym of the Night. Well, they had the nachos working at Mrs. Sinawa, but would they have the best play of the night? That is the question as we present you with your Highlight Zone Play of the Week. And the honor, well, it goes to Morgan Ostrowski from Garrett. Eight and a half seconds left in this ball game. It was tied at 44. They go to Ostrowski in the post, and uh, the railroaders would be happy. They would walk away from the cage at Concordia with a two-point win over Woodland, courtesy of Morgan Ostrowski, and that is your Highlight Zone Play of the Week for girls' sectional semifinals. Congrats to the train as it rolls. How about a little more basketball? Mad Abs trying to extend their winning streak to four games. They were at the Wisconsin Herd. That was Jaquin and Gant with the slam. Then you're going to see Ryan Bowen for three. He had 19 and 13, but the Ants fall 127 to 119. Ants are back home on Sunday. They host Delaware at the spot. Thomas with their seventh and final game of a seven-game road swing. They were at Kalamazoo tonight. The K looking good here. Ellen Lasarchik with the power play goal. That's his 14th goal of the year. Made it one zip K's in the first period. Second period, we're tied in two. A.J. Jinx, the captain, with the power play goal of his own. The Comets take a 3-2 lead there. But unfortunately, it was Kalamazoo's night after that. KZU wins 5-4. Comets are finally back home at the Coliseum. Tomorrow night, they host Tulsa at 7:35. Our final stop tonight, Arnie Ball Court. The Mastodons rank 10th in the country as the Bali Dons hosting Urbana. We pick it up in set two. Dons won the first set 25-11. Second set here, it's Carlos Mercado with the ace. And the Dons were loving what they saw at the Gates Center. A little bit later, you're going to see the Dons hammer one home after it goes all the way up in the stands. The Dons had a kill percentage of 47.5%, which is amazing. Meanwhile, Urbana's percentage was negative 2.9. That's not good. The Dons win this one by a final of three zip at home. We're well, taking a look at next week's games. It's all boys from here on out on the Highlight Zone. As you can see, Snyder at Bishop Lures. That is a key game in the SAC. And that will be your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. And the Panthers battle the Knights at Bishop Lures. Northrop is at Carroll. 
Norwell looking good in those any eight standings. They travel to Bob Strait Court to take on Huntington North. Meanwhile, Leo is at Columbia City, while Westview travels to Prairie Heights in a key NECC contest. We'll have it all covered next week, but for now, I'm Glenn. See you then.